Welcome to a best of all fans I have tested video. This will be the best of all the fans I have tested thus far in my channel. Uh, there may be fans in this video that don't have a dedicated video to themselves published yet. It is coming. It just takes me a while to get through all the videos. I've got a pretty significant backlog, but I just want to add that caveat in here because I don't know when I'm going to produce it. I also want to thank viewers like you who tuned into my videos and watch them and I want to thank my Patreon and YouTube members you guys rock uh, it's made a lot of purchases actually possible with minor upgrades that I've wanted through this channel and I'm just trying to build up to what I'm calling the next level of my testing and if you're looking for ways that you can help out this channel subscribing is well the easiest way to help support me anyways let's get into the testing First up is the case simulation test, taken at the 6, the 9, the 11, and the 14.5 inch mark. And these are representative of different size computer cases. If you're looking at a small form factor tower, but that still is a front to back airflow, you're going to be focusing on the 6 inch mark. The 6 inch mark is also representative of a short throw distance. Basically think about a computer case where you've got fans in the bottom of the case and you're blowing them up towards your GPU. That would be that short throw distance. If you're looking at a small compact tower, front to back airflow. Basically think a case that can hold 220 millimeter class fans or one that can fit a standard ATX or MATX motherboard and a GPU of length of that motherboard, but not any longer than that. The nine inch mark would be where you want to focus. A lot of media center PCs are seem to be this size. Then you've got the 11 inch mark, which would be your standard mid towers. Think 320, millimeter class fans or 360 AO, this would be the data mark you're going to focus in on. And then the 14.5 inch is like 340 millimeter class fans and truly large towers like the Fract Design Torrent would be in this size category. So the very best fan is the Silent Wings 4 Pro 140. It is the best noise normalized. Number two is the TLS 12. That is remarkable for a 120 millimeter class fan. But notice by larger cases, it's starting to lag behind, but the, and it's not quite the tippy top at the 6 inch mark either. While a fan like this orange line, which is the Unifan P20, does really well at the 6, and then does a steady drop the entire time, and ends up on the lower end of the pack. So again, just want to I'm just pointing out that you need to focus on what computer case you're going to use these in. A fan that I swapped out for my stock fans in my torrent is the Tough Fan 14 Pro, which is one fan in the 140mm class category that I consider to be tippy top. It doesn't do very well at the 6 inch mark, but by the 9 and the 11, and even holds up very well at the 14.5 inch mark. So I know there's a lot of data on here. Don't worry, the raw data is at the end of the video. If you want to look at it in that format, I just want to show the differences between the very top end fans. So like the very bottom end of the top end fans would be like the Grand Tornado right here. The six and the nine inch mark, it's not doing very well. The 11 inch mark, it's actually kind of in the middle, but then by the time we hit the 14.5 inch mark, it's dropping away again. Okay, I know this is a lot to take a look at, so let's simplify it. Best fans for small to medium sized cases. So this would be like the six, the nine, and not so much the 11 inch mark. We got the Silent Wings 4 Pro, the TLB12 Extreme, the Shark Force 160, the Tough N14 Pro, and you can kind of see them all in a reduced format and how they stack up against each other. How about for lar medium to large size cases? Well, you got the Silent Wings 4 Pro, TLB12 Extreme, Shark Force 140, Tough N14 Pro, and you can see how they rank up against each other. Now let's crank things up to 100% PW fan signaling and let all these fans rip roar to a, their maximum and that they're capable of. So the very best is sitting right here, this teal line with the dash, and that is the NFA14 IPC 3000 RPM fan. It's noisy, but it's technically the best. It moves the most amount of air. Then not too far behind it is the Iceberg Thermal Extra 140. I had problems getting this fan to run. I couldn't make it run outside of BIOS, so take that for what you will. Full video review on it by itself. Then we got the TLB12 Extreme doing remarkably well. 
sitting actually at the 14 minute mark in the number two position is this triangle and that orange triangle belongs to the swell fan gt14 reverse fan it did remarkably well for larger cases not so much for anything else but for 14.5 inches it did really well like the and another remarkable one is the x2gp18 it is a 180 millimeter class fan and that makes any computer case basically act like a wind tunnel so it's got no room for the fare to slow down excellent result for that fan then how noisy are these fans well we're going to take a look at the nine inch mark because that's the mark that i decided to choose and airspeed versus noise the first one is in decibels so they're ranked in how i kind of perceive them as best to worst the tls 12 is best across the vast majority of its rpm ranges and not far behind that is the loop ftp 140 and not far behind that is the tlb 12 extreme and you can really start to see how these fans rank up against each other how uh close in performance my top picks actually are with each other you'd be very happy with any of these fans changing the way you take a look at it converting it to sewn i have a little piece on my channel as to decibels versus sewn um if you're curious about learning about the differences between it but basically in a nutshell sewn helps drag out higher noise levels because it converts uh, the decibel system into a more linear type system and noise isn't linear so it changes a more linear looking line that you get in a decibel graph and makes it look more like a curve that you can the sewn graph but it really helps stretch out higher noise levels rather than going oh well it doesn't look that much more like the uh, nfa14 is really quite a lot noisier which you can't tell that that well on the decibel graph and it also cramps together at lower noise levels so that you really can appreciate just how quiet a lot of these fans actually are now we're taking a look at performance from my cpu air cooler and in testing i found that the air speeds going through my u12a the cpu air cooler are more or less equivalent like i'm talking one meter per second equivalent to the uh radiator that i've decided to purchase for this channel for testing and that's the nemesis 140 gtx now i haven't added in thermal testing i want to be able to afford a test system in the future or actually two so that i can add that kind of thermal testing to this channel but i can't do that without help from viewers like you again subscribing and joining me as a youtube member or as a patreon that really would go a long way but let's get back to the regularly scheduled program so here the very best cooler for noise normalized is the unifan p28 followed by the a12x25 the p14 max loop ftp 140 tough n 12 turbo mega cool 120 and p12 max with the fluid dynamic bearing this data does represent the latest and the best of the data uh, when when this is published how about at 100 percent p dummy fan signaling well the very best fan i've tested is the mega cool 123 000 rpm fan but it is rip run at 330 decibels now there are other fans that are don't move as much air as it that are noisier like the iceberg thermal extra 120 uh, the p12 max low dynamic bearing is a little bit noisier and moves less air p14 max is a little bit quieter barely imperceptibly quieter but moves less air but so if you're looking at the king for the best the mega cool might just be it but if you're going to be sticking this onto 140 radiators i would recommend actually matching it up with that size with the proper sized fan as opposed to just hunting for the best now we have airspeed through the cooler versus decibels these are the best of the best and the bottom of the best is what is this the thick fp120 so I'd still consider it a very good fan, but it is just a far cry from the cream of the crop that rises to the top. Uh, the A12X25 is sitting right here doing remarkably well. And the P, P28, yeah, the Unifan P20 is sitting right here. So you can see it climbs in performance right at the end, which is how it kind of jumps ahead. Before that, it's kind of sitting top in 
the top end, but not actually at the peak, the pinnacle of topness, I guess. We got the Mega Cool 120, and it's sitting right there, right in line with other top choices. So uh, let's go ahead and move on to Sone. Again, gives a different perspective as to how these fans actually take a look at each other, and it helps drive away how, while these are still very good fans, like the Thick and uh, the uh, Tough Fan 14 Pro. No, that's this one. Oh, this is the A14. You know, they're still good, but they're not quite at that top level. Now, it might be best of the best, but what is the fan that is the best value? Well, the TLC12 in a triple pack is the best value, followed by the TLE12 B Extreme, followed by the TLS12, TLG12, and you get the idea. You can just follow this all the way down for smaller computer cases. How about for mid-sized towers? Well, the S12, the E12B, TLG12, Sickle Flow, Pure Fan Wings, 3120. Let's see, where were some of the top performers? Are any of them on this top value area? Well, here's the Tough Fan 14 Pro. It's sitting way down there. The S12 ranked really well in uh, noise normalized results, especially in computer cases. So it's up to you to determine what fan suits the best value for what you need while still giving you the best the performance that you need. I can't make these decisions for you. I'm just here to present the data. Uh, cooler performance, noise normalized here on the left side. TLC12, the TLE12B, S12, G12, uh, thermal rate really has put out some really good fans lately so they're they're flooding the market uh coolers at 100 percent p dome fan signaling you know you go down the list p12 dual ball bearing sits right up there p14 max s12 g12 the p12 with the fluid dynamic bearing and all these values are based on the retail pricing i could find so if your retail pricing does not match up to mine, the order of these fans is is going to shift, especially if a fan goes on sale. The order of them will shift. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. And now we're on to the raw data. So over here on the leftmost side, we have the best overall. So this takes the cooler testing as well as the case simulation testing and goes... Hey, if I were to average these results and smush it together in a way that I think makes sense, which how would I rank these fans from best to worst? Uh, as a if you're going to get one fan to do it all, so it'd be the P14 Max followed by the TLB12 Extreme, Tough Fan 14 Pro, Loop FTP 140, Unifan P28, and Shark Force 140 would be the top six fans. Uh, I would keep above probably the top. 12 for best all-rounders for you to be truly happy with it but if you're going to focus on best of the best noise normalized the p28 sits right there uh for cooler testing noise normalized the uni ah, noctua a12x25 p14 max you get the idea maximums and then for in the computer case in the case simulation test how they ranked again at noise normalized and 100 percent so all this is a labor of love. This is a free channel. Uh, but right now this channel is not sustainable. It costs more for me to run it than I get out of it. But you, the viewer, can make a difference by thinking about joining me as a Patreon or as a YouTube member. It really would go a long way because my goal is to make the channel sustainable so that I actually enjoy collecting data and I have a passion for fans. I'm an aerospace engineer. And uh, my goal is to produce the best fan data on, well, I guess YouTube because I was unhappy with how everybody else was doing it. Um, if you got suggestions for ways I can improve the videos and make the content more entertaining, I'm welcome to that constructive criticism. I'm always trying to improve it. If you have suggestions for fans you want me to take a look at, leave that in the comments links down below. I'll try to incorporate it in my next buying cycle. That'll happen sometime in probably September. Uh, other than that, well, I hope you have a great day. Thank you for joining me here on Computer Tech and More, and I hope to see you next time.